What's up, everybody? It's time for another Cubase tutorial. Let's do it. What's up, everyone? We're back with another tutorial in Cubase. Today, I'm going to show you my favorite trick that's embedded into Cubase's EQs. I think it's awesome, and then I wish that every plugin manufacturer included this, but alas, many of them do not. And so I'll open up the two main Cubase EQs that I use, and I think that they're the two most effective ones. It's a Studio EQ, which is the granddaddy old school EQ for bands, and Frequency. And these are just on my chord bus. So this is the song that I released last Saturday called Synthwave Retro Electro. That's what we're working with. And uh, this is just the chord bus, so the bong, bong, bong. That's what I'm using. Now there's a feature in Cubase's EQs that I'm going to show you in a second. It's my favorite feature. But before we get to that, let me just say that I think that these two EQs, Studio EQ and Frequency, are fantastic. I think Studio EQ can do 95% of any EQing you could ever possibly want to do which is great. And then I think the inclusion of frequency with uh, Cubase Pro 9, that covered the extra 5%, especially since you can do stereo, mono, or mid-side processing. If you look here, uh, we, we can switch that to mid-side and you can you know, judge your mid-side uh, EQing or just do a straight stereo. And they have, of course, all the cuts, shelves, peaks, and notches that you could possibly want. And there's eight bands to work with. So frequency is extremely powerful, but I still find myself using Studio EQ a lot just because I'm used to it and it works fast. And I think Studio EQ is very similar to the EQ on the channel strip. The strip here has an EQ, but Studio EQ is very similar to the EQ on your channel strip. But we're not talking about that today. We'll just talk about the actual plugins themselves. And so what I wanted to just say in brief is that from an EQ perspective, and there may be some analog modeled gear that'll give it some vintage sound or vibe, but in terms of just straight EQing, whether it's corrective EQing, filtering, you know, cutting out bad frequencies, accentuating good frequencies, these two are more than up to the task. And there's something that Cubase puts in to their EQs that I love. So this song right here, it's in C, the key of C, uh, with these chords. Now, I don't have the frequencies and the keys all mapped out, but in Cubase, that doesn't matter. I mean, I know that A is 55, 110, 220, 440. You know, E is 82.4, 164.8, but I don't need to know that. Let's say the song is in C, and I want the frequency to be C4 on a keyboard. That's C4 on a keyboard. And so you can adjust whatever key you want. Let's say I want this to be the fifth. So I want this to be E6 on a keyboard. That would be the third. And then I want this to be the fifth. So this would be G7 or G8. And so I can EQ, you know, at root third fifth and it'll accentuate those frequencies. And this works for frequency as well. If I wanted to EQ at C4, it'll find C4. If I want to EQ at C3, it'll find C3. And this is a subtle little trick, but I think when you EQ around the key frequencies or EQ out, you know, reduce uh, via notch filtering, bad frequencies, uh, dissonant tones, you're actually a step up. And that's why I like the fact that this feature is included with Cubase. The fact that you can just type in the note that you want to filter out or accentuate. You can accentuate overtones around the root or the fifth or the third, or you can take out overtones that are nasty and cruddy sounding. So this has been a, just a quick tip showing you a little feature in both of the Cubase main EQs, Frequency and Studio EQ. I hope that you found it useful. If you have, feel free to like or subscribe and have a great day, everybody. Bye.